This is an arms warrior guide for World of Warcraft patch 10.2 season 3 of Dragonflight. Don't worry there's gonna be no information overload here because this is for beginners but we are gonna help you get that rotation down to a T and get the ball rolling. First things first let's look at the stat priority for arms warriors in 10.2. First of all of course most and foremost, you are going to be wanting strength and eye level above everything else. But if you do come across a situation where you're having to choose between two items, this is the priority here of crit and haste or haste and crit, then verse and mastery or mastery and verse. We do, as arms warriors, have some fantastic abilities in our toolkit in patch 10.2. and I'm going to go over some of the core ones that I think you need to be most aware of. Now, I do always say when you are more familiar with the class or spec and you've had a lot more practice that you do go through the spellbook and the same is going to apply with talents because I'm not going to go through every single detail, just what you need to know. I do say to go through that spellbook and do go through the talents and really look at every individual thing to make sure that you fully understand what's going on. But as a beginner, I wouldn't want to overload you with all that. And these are the core ones, I think, as I said, you need to be aware of. So first things first, we've got Rallying Cry. This is going to give party members 10% more health temporarily, and you can use this in hard times, as they say. Then we have Die by the Sword. It's going to give you 100% parry chance and reduce the damage that you personally take. And then we've got Bitter Immunity. This is going to restore health and remove all negative effects on yourself. And last but not least, we have Avatar. You're going to transform into an Avatar, doing 20% more damage and becoming even more super duper. Then we've got the few utilities that we have as an arms warrior. And the first one is Pummel. This is quite simply your interrupt or kick, as it's otherwise known, for interrupting spellcasting. Then we've got Battle Shout. This is the same as Arcane Intellect or Mark of the Wild with Druids and Fortitude with Priests. It is going to increase the party's attack power by 5% for an entire hour. And then we have Hamstring. This is going to do a little bit of damage as well, but the main reason we're going to be using it is to actually slow the target by 50%. This here is the beginner talent tree that I recommend. This is a little bit more tuned towards single target. However, some of your attacks are going to cleave, etc. So don't worry too much about using this in Raid or Mythic Plus. If you're doing beginner keys and raiding, etc., this is going to do you absolutely fine. And I will put an import string down below in the description so you can get this straight into your game. Speaking of being in game, here we are. Before we actually get started on the rotation, I just want to show you a few things here we've got on the UI. The first thing is this weak aura I have on the center of my screen. I'm also going to put a link in the description below for that one. It is really, really useful. You don't, of course, have to use it. I find it very useful personally as it shows you everything you need to know. One of the things you do need to know is that as warriors, we have an extra resource and that is called rage. And this is our rage bar here. We're going to accumulate rage and then spend it with certain abilities. So now that we're going to look at the rotation, number one on our action bar here is charge. And we're going to use this whenever we're initiating combat. The second here is execute. And this is going to cost some rage. It's going to attempt to finish off a foe causing some damage based on the rage spent between 20 and 40. And it's only usable with enemies less than 35% health. If your foe survives, 10% of that rage is actually going to be refunded. And we're going to get a proc from an, a, a talent called Sudden Death here. Your attacks have a chance to make your next execute, cost no rage, be usable on any target regardless of their health, and deal damage as if you've spent 40 rage, which is the maximum. So it's going to deal the maximum damage. So that is the second thing on our priority. Whenever that procs, we're going to use that. Third is going to be our thunderous roar. Roar to deal damage to enemies in 12 yards and cause them all to bleed. And then we're going to use our avatar. And we're going to use this in conjunction with Colossus Smash. So avatar is going to cause you to deal 20% increased damage. And then our Colossus Smash is going to deal damage and increase damage you deal to the target for another 30% for 13 seconds. So we're going to use these together. The next thing we're going to use is our Mortal Strike, and we're going to use this on cooldown. It's a vicious strike that deals damage and reduces the effectiveness of healing on the target. And you can see here that's made a proc on our overpower. The next thing we're going to do is Thunderclap, and this is actually going to apply a bleed called Rend on our target. Now, Rend is its own ability in its own right. 
but we're not going to need to use it because we are going to be using Thunderclap to apply it. The next thing we're going to go on to is Whirlwind, and we're going to use this to basically spend Rage. And, you know, I think we all pretty much know this is an AoE cleave attack that makes you do a Whirlwind. And then we have Overpower, which we're going to use regardless of charges. Now, Overpower is going to increase the damage of your next Mortal Strike, which is this one here. And we this can stack up to two times. We're going to use this um, whenever we can. And then last but not least is Slam. And this is when we've got nothing else to press. We're going to simply use this to dump our Rage. So just to go over these again, we have Charge, which we're going to use to initiate combat. We're going to use Execute when we get a proc. We're going to use our Thunderous Roar. We're then going to use Avatar and Colossus Smash to increase damage done. And that we're going to use together. We're going to use Mortal Strike on cooldown. Thunderclap to apply Rend, which is the bleed. We're going to use Whirlwind and then Overpower regardless of stacks. And then our Slam is going to be our filler. Now, one other thing to notice, as you'll see here, we have Deep Wounds on the target, which is another bleed. Deep Wounds is our mastery here. Mortal Strike, which is number six. Your Colossus Smash, which is number five here, which you're using with your Avatar cooldown. And Blade Storm inflict deep wounds, dealing bleed damage to the enemy and increasing the uh, damage the enemy takes from you by 36%. And that's our mastery, just FYI. Now, when the enemy gets to 35% health, meaning you can use your Execute all the time, our priority list is going to change a bit and we're going to enter what we call the Execute phase of the arms rotation and this is mainly because of a talent here called bloodletting deep wounds which is your mastery bleed rend the one applied by thunderclap and thunderous roar this one here this cooldown their effects their bleed effects are going to last longer and have a five percent increased crit chance if you have rend again that's applied by thunderclap mortal strike is going to inflict rend on targets below 35% health. Which means if you are if you have rend in your spellbook, which we do, basically Mortal Strike is going to apply rend for you at 35% health and below, meaning that we no longer need to use our thunderclap to actually apply rend and at 35% health and under, we are no longer going to use thunderclap in our rotation. The same is going to go with whirlwind when we're in this execute phase. So Thunderclap and Whirlwind are no longer going to be used when the target is under 35% health. We're also going to drop our filler one of Slam here. This is also no longer going to be used at 35% health and under. The main reason for that is because our Execute is going to be our main focus at that point. We'll be able to use it whenever we want. And this is going to be our main Rage Spender. So just to clarify there, again, because of our Bloodletting, which means that at 35% health, our um, Mortal Strike is going to inflict Rend, the bleed on the target. We're no longer going to use Thunderclap, Whirlwind, or Slam, and we're going to use Mortal Strike on cooldown still, and Execute is going to become our main Rage Spender. That is the main difference there once we go into that phase. Now, the last thing to talk about is going to be the tier set. And the tier set isn't really going to impact our rotation at all, and this does have it built in. So what the two set does is it means that your rend, which again is the bleed applied by Thunderclap and or Mortal Strike at below 35% health, that bleed is going to have its damage increased by 30% and Sudden Death, this talent here, remember, can be triggered by rend's bleed damage as well. Remember that Sudden Death is the one that is going to impact our execute. The four set bonus from 10.2 is going to make it so that Sudden Death, again this talent, also makes our next Execute here powerfully slam the ground, causing a Thunderclap, which is this one, it's going to cause a Thunderclap that deals 100% increased damage, and in addition to that, the Execute target is going to bleed for 50% of Execute's damage over 5 seconds, and if the bleed is reapplied, the remaining damage is then added to the new bleed. So it's starting to get a bit technical there, but basically the two set and the four set aren't going to impact your rotation and they are already built into this. I hope you enjoyed this guide into Arms Warrior. It's actually a really fun spec to play if you enjoy melee classes. And again, 
Don't forget to subscribe and check out down below. I have all other specializations for 10.2 as well, in case you are interested. But if you do have any other questions, feel free to join my Discord, where we have some really knowledgeable people who also play all sorts of specs and classes.